Hey everyone, my name's Chris. Today we're going antique shopping and thrift shopping and flea market shopping at some different thrift stores in Branson, Missouri. Now, when I go treasure hunting, I'm usually looking for old toys or different items that I remember when I was a kid. And we actually had this telephone. It's a circle and we had it in our living room. And I think I still have one in my toy museum, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to look when I get home. But I had to videotape this, it's so cool. Now at this first antique store or flea market, I'll show you what I found. I found this little Bradley Christmas doll for 10 or $12, I can't remember. Then I found these two vintage hats for $8 each, which were really good deals. They're usually like 20, 25. So I picked those up and then I picked up this little ceramic golfer cause I have a collection of these and he was only $6.50. So that was a really good find. So let's grab our treasures and go pay for them so we can go to the next flea market and look for some more treasures and collectibles. Now this is actually my favorite flea market in Branson. It's called the Apple Tree Mall and it's right there on the main road. When you walk in, you're just hit with tons and tons of vendors. This place is humongous. And I think we stayed in here actually over two hours. I wanted to go to the toy museum in Branson, but um, we ended up staying in here most of our time because I thought the toy museum was open on Sundays and it was and it was closed. So we could have actually gone to this flea market on Sunday instead. But next time I go to Branson, I'm hitting the, the toy museum first. Now, I saw this there, the Louisiana Superdome, which is called something else now, like Mercedes-Benz Superdome, or it changes all the time. It's a decanter, and I think I'm going to get that. It had all kinds of cool things at this flea market. There were different handmade soaps and candles. There's just a little bit for everybody here. At this booth, they had hanging gnomes, and I'm a big gnome collector, but I didn't get one at this particular flea market. I saw this cool board game over here in the corner. It's the Babysitter's Club. And I started to get it, but I didn't want to go through it to see if all the pieces were there. I always stop at the booths that have any kind of toys because you never know what kind of little hidden treasure you're going to find in a box or on a shelf. So I always dart in just to see what they have. I videotaped this booth because it was all cookie cutters. I had never seen a vendor booth like that. Something pretty different. Um, this booth had all kinds of little goodies everywhere. These are my favorite kind of booths that have toys and little collectibles from the 70s and 80s and 90s. And that's where you'll find me because that's my little honey hole to look at. I did see a couple toys there I, I really wasn't familiar with. Like this little um, monster figurine right there. I'd never heard of him. So I love seeing different toys I've never heard of. Especially when they're vintage from the 80s or 90s. Now, this booth did have something that really grabbed my attention down here. It's an old shirt tails um, cradle for dolls or plush, and it's missing the bottom, but I think I'm going to get my brother to put me a piece in there. I think I'm going to get that. And this booth took old photos and made magnets out of them for your refrigerator, and I'm probably going to pick up one of those. And they have these old cereal boxes and old soda boxes, and... Who would buy these kind of things? It's me. I'm definitely going to pick up some of these. These are the coolest things. These are vintage Mountain Dew and Pepsi cartons from the late 90s when they were giving away Star Wars freebies. I, I, yep, going to have to get some of these. Lord of Mercy, I've always wanted a set of these geese that you dress for the different seasons. But I'm that person that doesn't have time to dress his geese every season that comes around. But... I might have to get me one of those one day for the toy museum. I thought this booth was kind of cool. They uh, repurposed old things and made lamps out of them. I thought that's really cool, really clever. Some people are just very, very creative. Now this booth, of course, grabbed my attention with this old vintage plush down here. And it had a Snoopy phone. I have one of these Snoopy phones in my toy collection. And I always like to check them out to see how much they're worth. I thought this little planter was cute, shaped like a sink. Oh, there's just all kinds of cool things at a flea market. No matter what you collect, you'll always find something. I saw this little frog up there. It reminded me of my grandmother when she used to collect those. And then this, this record display, I saw this 
record of a little young Donny Osmond. Oh my God, he's so young back then. Now I'm the type of person I usually kind of look around the flea market first and kind of think about what I want to get unless it's something I really, really want, then I'll stick it right in my basket. I thought this wreath was pretty cool too. Sometimes I'll videotape things that I just want to keep the idea that I can make myself. Uh, these little banks were super cute, but they were super expensive. I usually don't like to spend too much when I'm buying vintage toys unless it's something super rare that I've always wanted. But like I said, a flea market is just my place to go. There's so many great things to look at, so many good ideas. Sometimes you can take pictures of things that you can easily make yourself if you're a little bit crafty. This little booth I went to had a lot of doll furniture and dolls and everything was so cheap. She was like a dollar, a dollar fifty, two dollars. So I did pick up a couple little things at her booth. I love to pick up tin signs you can hang on the wall too. All these are new to look old, but I think I am going to get this one of Aquaman. I don't know why I'm always so fascinated by Aquaman, but usually when I see things with him on it, I'll pick them up. I just saw so much I wanted here, but you know, you're on a budget. You have to kind of narrow it down and pick out the things you want the most. And I also look for things that I think are valued less than they're what they're worth. So that helps to make my toy collection worth more than what I spent on it. I thought these little hot air balloons were really cute. I would love to hang these all throughout the toy museum with a fan blowing on them. Um, thought this little purse was cute. I I'm always just videotaping the things I think are really cute and clever that people did a great job on. Now, sometimes at the flea markets, you do have to watch prices. Like this booth had some really great things in it, but they were priced really high. They were priced the same amount as they were at Walmart and Target, the, the current stores. Like I think what they did was they got a really good sale on a lot of stuff and then they just marked it back up for their booth. But hey, everybody's gonna make a dollar. Everybody's got to pay their booth rent. But for me, I'm just usually looking for a good deal when I go to flea markets. This vendor was very creative. They made all kinds of superhero capes and masks for the little kids. And I thought that was pretty clever. I haven't seen that at a lot of flea markets. So that's what you want is something different, something to grab people's attention. Now this booth had a lot of cool stuff. Had a lot of Disney and Mickey Mouse items. Mickey Mouse phone, I think I have one of those. I need to do a video of all my phones so I can remember all the different phones I have in the toy museum. But this booth was really cool, a little bit pricey for me. So I moved on to another booth. Now this one was kind of sparse, didn't have a lot, but the things they did have were pretty cool. They even had an empty Cabbage Patch Kid box you could put one in. I like that Ken Barbie case too. You don't see too many of them for Ken. And then they had made these Barbie clothes out of the Star Wars fabric. Very, very creative. And this was pretty cool. They took some old Ken dolls and dressed them in the Star Wars fashions that they made. So I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to get one of these. These are pretty awesome. All right, I'm going to try to show you the stuff I got at the flea market. I did get both of those old soda boxes with the Star Wars logos on them. I think I paid $8 each for those, but I had never seen them and I had to have those. I bought the Adams Family cereal box. Like who's gonna buy an empty cereal box? But that person is me. And then I got this one of Steve Urkel. I did get the Shirt Tails Cradle. I thought that was a really good deal and it was only $8. So that was really a steal. And then I did get the Aquaman 10 sign. Um, that was $10, but I knew I was going to get it when I saw it. It's pretty cool. And then I got a couple old hats. Both of these were just $6 each. That was a really good deal. I got a small Paddington bear for $2. And then this, I got an African-American Baywatch doll for $20. I didn't have that. And then I had this old Barbie computer for $6 from the 90s. You see how large it was. And then I got this little Jacqueline Kennedy ornament for $6. And I'll probably, I probably won't put it on the Christmas tree. I'll keep it in the box. Then I got these little um, Elena patches for a dollar. So I had to get those. They were too cheap not to get. Let's see what else I got. I got some Hot Wheels for a dollar each. I usually just pick up Hot Wheels and I think they're a really cool design. I don't really know which ones are worth money and which ones are not. I got I Love Lucy Magnet back at that booth for $2. 
And then I got this little bag of plastic football helmets for $4. Those are vintage. Used to have a lot of those in the 70s. And then I got a large Fisher Price Little People for $1.50 and a cool bracelet for me for $3. And then for $3, I did get the little Creature 8 monster with all the eyeballs as a face. I thought that was too weird not to get for a, a toy museum. I got this little um, Thomas Jefferson doll for $3 and a Hocus Pocus keychain for $3. You see I have an eclectic mix here. I did get the Star Wars Ken outfit or Barbie outfit. I think it was $4. And I got a showboat mug since we're going to watch that dinner show tonight for $2. I figured there'd be more than $2 at the showboat. And I did get that Ken doll case just because I never see the doll cases with Ken. Then after we went to those first two flea markets, we just drove around some on the main strip, just seeing all the new things they've built since we were there last time. I think it's been probably five, six years since we've been to Branson. There were so many new different tourist attractions that were um, new. So um, it was kind of fun to see it. You'll have to excuse my dirty car windshield. I see there's some specks in it, but um, I just wanted to film some of the drive because there were so many cool things to see. And coming up here in the red and yellow building is the world's largest toy museum. I really wanted to go see that, but we just got our days mixed up and did not get to see it on the Saturday because I thought it was open on Sunday. I was wrong. Uh, coming up there on the right is the Titanic Museum. We went and did that with the kids last time we came to Branson and they really liked it. We enjoyed it too. Turned around and this is the last building I filmed before we headed to the downtown area because we knew there was one more big flea market we wanted to go to in the downtown. So we made it back to the downtown and we went to visit this other flea market down on the corner we like and it's called Codwell's Flea Market. Now right when we walked in I already started seeing stuff I wanted. I knew I had to pace myself. I wanted that little Simpson interactive figure set but I wasn't sure if I already had it in my toy collection or not so I did not buy that but I love going to these kind of vendor booths that have such an eclectic mix especially with toys in it i'm definitely gonna stop when there's toys uh, they had all these pez dispensers and i'm a sucker for pez dispensers too i have a huge collection of those in the toy museum Actually, when I went into the restroom, they had all these old magazine ads on the wall for wallpaper, and they had the whole set of Fisher Price Little People toys ads. So I filmed it. Nothing like filming in the bathroom, right?
Well, again, anytime there's toys at a booth, I'm going to stop and check it out. I had this cool little beer pong moose game. I thought that was really cute. Had this Bradley doll on a stool in a bag, but she was $25. I thought that was a little pricey for her. And then I saw this little cornflakes plush. He's only $5, so I'm probably going to pick him up. And this next booth was really cool. They had tons of old cookie jars, really vintage ones. Like up here, they have the Honeymooners. I thought that was a really cool one right there. I usually collect these two. These are called Paula statues, and they're from the 1970s. I have a big old collection of those at home. Then I have a collection of these too. You don't collect everything, but they're little solar powered people. And you can usually pick these up at Dollar Tree for like a dollar each, but some of them are becoming collectible. Like I said, I have to pick and choose when I see things I like. I like that little Puerto Rican doll right there. And I like that old baseball game. Uh, this booth has this uh, extra large super size Paula statue. So I did pick her right up and then back to another booth that had tons and tons of cookie jars somebody probably collected them at one time and then got tired of it and they ended up creating a vendor booth with their collection now this little booth was like the mother load of toys but there were just so many in there it was just too many to look at so i checked out a couple prices of things i was curious about just to know what they were worth in my own collection some dolls and stuff but I think I did just end up getting a little knockoff doll in this booth. And then this next booth has some Hocus Pocus artsy items that they had made. And I did get a small cutout art piece. That, I think I got that white one right there and it was like $8. It was a pretty good deal. And then I picked up this little Coca-Cola plush walrus. He was only $2. So I didn't want to leave him behind since he was so cheap. I always love those paintings with the big eyed dogs and cats and kids from the 70s, but I didn't pick those up this time. Then I went to this booth that was loaded down with some really great toys and stuff. I really enjoyed just looking around. I already had that Barbie camper over there and it's only worth about 20 bucks. And then um, I saw this little stuffed animal dog. It reminded me of the plush they used to give away at the state fairs in the 70s. Those are kind of collectible now. They usually cost about eight or $10. And, only cost about a quarter back in the day to win those. I'm probably going to get this tin sign. It says, money buys happiness if you know where to shop. Well, that's a flea market. Duh. At this next booth, I saw this cool Maxine lamp. I think she's from one of the uh, greeting card companies. Maxine always has a kind of bad attitude, but I like her. I think I am her. Then I saw this old gumball machine set I really liked, but you know that awful word I have to say, budget. Can't get everything we want, but sometimes I wish people would just give me like a thousand dollar gift card at a flea market. Oh, that would be heaven. So many good things here I'd like to have, but again, had to pick and choose and just get a couple things. Back of the store, I saw this precious moment large ceramic set. I thought it would be about $25, but it's like $75, so I didn't get that. That was a little pricey for me. So let me show you everything I did get. I got this cool metal metal cupboard for $20, and it's really large. I thought that was a, a pretty fair price for that. Then I got this little knockoff Ken looking doll for $3. I think he's from overseas or Mexico. And then I got uh what is this? A sleepy doll from Snow White. He was only $12. He's pretty vintage. And then I got the little Walrus Coke plush for $2. And then I got the handmade piece of artwork of the Hocus Pocus sisters. And it was only $8. I thought that was a very good deal for that since it was handmade. I did get the large Paula statue for $8. She was one of my best finds. 
Those are really hard to find. And that's probably worth about $20 alone. You got this little Girl Scouts metal box for $2. I'll put with all my Girl Scout stuff in the toy museum. And then last but not least, I did get that metal sign that was so cute for $10. And then we stopped at Paula Dean's restaurant to have a dinner before we went to our last shop for the evening. Uh, this is our third time going to one of Paula Dean's restaurants. They're very cool. They have a big gift shop when you walk in full of merchandise. And then their dinner, when you go into the actual restaurant, it's usually served family style and it's a buffet style. Uh, you don't walk up and get it. They bring it to your table. Every time you want more food, you just ask them, you know, what you want refilled. We love Branson and we had a fantastic time there. It was such a beautiful day. So our last stop for the day was the five and 10 store in the downtown part of Branson. Now this place really wasn't a five and 10 store like back in the old days where you get little cheap candies and stuff. I think it had one little bitty section of candy, but most of their candy was the modern stuff. And they had all those cool sodas that taste like different things like dirt and pickles and enchilada. So I think I did get this one, the Wink Martindale soda, because I love game shows. So I did pick that one up. I did also pick up the Joy of Calm soda of Bob Ross, and then I also picked up a Pac-Man can soda. Now, I just kept these from my toy museum for collectibles, but I think next time I go to one of these places, I'm actually gonna buy some to drink because I never open them. They're too cool to open. Everyone needs some soap shaped like a donut, right? Uh, they had a small toy section in the back, but they were pretty pricey with their toys, so I, I didn't pick up anything there. They also had a really cool Halloween section, and they had a really cool Christmas section. But again, this was a, a touristy store, so the prices were a little bit higher here. I'm usually a big sucker for anything Golden Girls. I'll buy it all, but I didn't buy anything at this particular stand because I already had several pieces of it. They even had some cool collectibles in the front of the store. I had a big Betty Boop statue. I really liked her. I had a big Marvel section with superheroes too. And then they had a lot of Pop Funkos there as well. Find a clearance section in the back of the store. I almost bought that Mr. Rogers lunchbox, but I decided to get this Ruth Bader Ginsburg doll instead for $9. She'll be a great addition to the toy museum. Well, I hope you enjoyed our video today. It's from a series we're making on YouTube called Value in My Toy Collection. If you did enjoy it, just hit subscribe. We're gonna make tons of other videos showing you the toys we find and part of my toy collection. So thank you so much for watching.